This lesson deals with note analysis with voltage sources. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 19. In our previous lessons we talked about a nodal analysis technique that was for circuits that contain only current sources and resistances. What about a voltage source? Well there's two cases to consider. The first is a voltage source with a series resistance. Now back in chapter 2 we showed that a voltage source with a series resistance could be converted into a current source with a parallel resistance that would produce the same effects at nodes A and B. This circuit and this circuit component are not the same, but they produce the same effect. So if we had a circuit with voltage sources in it that had series resistances, we can convert them to current sources with parallel resistances and then use our nodal analysis inspection algorithm. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose I want to solve for all the node voltages in a circuit. If I know those, I can find any voltage or any current in my circuits. In this example, I know the node voltage here is 12 volts and this one is 9 volts. The two unknown voltages are here and here. And I'll call those V1 and V2. Because I have voltage sources here and not current sources, I can't use my inspection algorithm. So let's convert them. I'll take this and convert it into a parallel current source and resistance. The resistance is the same value. And now the current is the voltage divided by the resistance. So that would be 12 milliamps. Same is true for this one here. Convert that into a parallel combination of a 1K resistor and then 9 volts divided by 1K. Now I can use my inspection algorithm and formulate a 2x2 two two matrix with my two unknowns, V1 and V2. I'm going to go in row 1, column 1, are the sum of the conductances at node 1. So 1 over 1K is 1 milli, 1 milli, and 1 milli, so 3 millimoles. Between nodes 1 and 2, I have 1K resistance, so it's going to be minus 1 over 1,000, or 1 milli, negative. And then the current source is entering node 1. It's just going to be 12 milliamps. Let's go to row 2, column 2. That'll be the sum of the conductances at node 2. 1 milli plus 1 milli plus 1 milli, so 3 millimoles. Between nodes 2 and 1 is the same as between 1 and 2, and 1 over 1,000, but then we're going to negate that. And then the current that's entering this node is 9 milliamps. So those are my two equations, the two unknowns. Again, written by inspection. This is really how software works. You can develop algorithms that you can just execute. All right, let's use Kramer's rule now. Let's find V1 and V2. We'll take the column associated with V1 and replace it with the left-hand side of the equation. Put it here, 12 million 9. And then divide by this determinant. So I'll get this times this, which is 36 micro. And then minus a minus, so a plus 9 micro. And then... 9 micro, and then, and then a minus 1 micro. So I get 45 micro over 8 micro, and that turned out to be 5.625 volts. Solve for V2 the same way. Bring this over into this column. But this determinant is still going to stay the same, so we know that that's equal to 8 micro, so I'll just write that down. This times this is 27 micro, and then a plus 12 micro. It turns out to be 4.875 we know the node voltages, we can find any voltage or any current in our circuit. Let's also find also the power generated and the power absorbed. So let's label our node voltages here, 5.625 and 4.875. Back in the original circuit, we had 12 volts here and 9 volts here, so we also know those node voltages. The current that flows in here by Ohm's law would then be just the voltage divided by 1K, so 5.625 milliamps, 4.875 milliamps here. Since this node voltage is higher than this one, let's define the current in this direction so it's a positive quantity. Don't have to do that, but just don't like negative signs. 12 volts minus 5.625 divided by 1,000 is 6.375 milliamps. This node voltage is higher than this one, so I'll define the current in this direction to get a positive value. 5.625 minus 4.875 over 1K is 750 microamps. And then this node voltage is higher than this one. I'll define it in this direction as 9 minus 4.875 divided by 1K. So here I've got 6.375 coming in, and then 5.625 going here, and really 0.75 milliamps going this way. And if you add those two up, you get this. Likewise, here I've got this entering, and I've got this entering. So 4.125 milliamps, 0.75 milliamps, that's equal to 4.875. Also find the power that's been absorbed and generated here. I've got current coming out of the plus terminal. So 12 volts times the 6.375. And then I've got current coming out of this one. So generating power. So 9 volts times the 4.125. I've got 113.625 milliwatts. Let's find the 
power absorbed by these resistances. So take I squared R if you want to, or V times I or V squared over R. Since we just found the current, let's just take this and square it, multiply it by the resistance, square this current, multiply it by the resistance, square this current, multiply it by this resistance, square this current, multiply it by the resistance, and then lastly, take this current, square it, and multiply it by the resistance. And you end up getting 113.625 milliwatts. Even though we didn't use this in the problem, this is true for every circuit at every instant in time. But this is why the node voltages are so useful. Once you know these four voltages, you can find any voltage or any current in your circuit. As we knew two of the four already, we just had to have two equations and two unknowns. So if you have voltage sources and they do have a series resistance, you could use a source transformation for finding eventually all the node voltages in your circuit. Now there's another possibility, and that's that there is no series resistance. And basically our algorithm breaks down. We'll have to go back to just using Kirchhoff's laws again to solve our problem. But our algorithm needed all current sources, and here I can't do the source transformation. Let's solve this problem and solve for this current I sub S, and let's solve for the ratio of V sub S to I sub S. I want to show a couple ideas to you. Now this problem, we know all the resistances, and the voltage source here is not specified. We'll learn a little bit later in the course about an idea called linearity. This is going to show some of those ideas as we solve this problem. How should I solve a problem that has a voltage source where I can't do a source transformation? Well, you can pick a reference node, pick one of the nodes of the voltage source, because then you would know one of the node voltages. So all I have to do now is solve for the remaining ones. And so I've got one node voltage here, second node voltage here. So I have to write two equations and two unknowns. I'll call this node one, node two, and node three, and I'll call this my reference or ground. Let's sum the currents at various nodes in our circuit. Now, if you sum the currents here at this node, you pick up another unknown. I don't know what the current coming out of this voltage source is because there is no relationship. I can, at these other nodes, I can calculate the currents based on the differences in node voltages just using Ohm's law. So sum the currents at the nodes that don't have a voltage source hooked up to them. That's your nodes two and three. I let the current leave the node as we did in our original development of the inspection algorithm, but you could pick any direction you want to. The current leaving this node is gonna be the voltage across this resistance divided by the resistance or times the conductance. So V2 minus V1, which is also V sub S divided by 1K. Here I've got V2 minus V3 divided by 1K, that's this term. And then I've got over here, got V2 divided by 250 ohms, that's actually V2 times four milli. Group together all the things that multiply our two unknowns, V2 and V3. I've got a term here that has V sub S in it. I'll put that on the other side of the equation. What we're gonna be doing is putting our sources on the left-hand side and then our unknown, in this case, node voltages on the right-hand side of the equation. We've got V2 times one milli, four milli, and eventually one milli, so six milli. And then times V3, I have this term here, which is minus one milli times V3. So I have one equation and two unknowns, assuming that I know the value of V sub S. The reason we don't specify this is that circuits are gonna be proportional to our inputs. So in other words, if you double your input, you'll double your response. This is the idea of linearity, and we'll talk about this a little bit later in the course. The same thing in node three now. Let me erase these uh, directions that I have here. So I'll let the current leave the node and do the same thing again. Again, you can pick any direction you want to because we're gonna be solving for the currents. And that's in terms of the node voltages. If you were to assign a current in a different direction, it's just gonna show up on the other side of the equation. So here I've got everything leaving the node, so nothing is entering just like before. And now I'm just gonna take the difference of my node voltages here. So I'll take uh, this minus this. And so I've got V3 minus V1, which is equal to V sub S divided by 250. And then one over that is four milli. And then I've got the current in here, which is now V3 minus V2 divided by one K or times one milli. And then lastly, the current in here, is V3 divided by 500, which is V3 times two milli. Yeah, let's group all the things together again. So I've got the four milli here for V sub S, I'll put that on the other side of the equation. And then I've got things that multiply V2 and just a minus one milli times V2. And then V3, I've got two millis, one milli and four, so that's seven milli. We'll put this together in matrix form. So here's my sources on the left-hand side, my unknowns on the right-hand side, and then the relationships between them. If you look at this matrix and look at the circuit, you could develop an algorithm. I'm gonna leave that for another course. There's some more techniques that we can talk about doing this, but for right now, I'm just gonna use the nodal analysis inspection algorithm when we have only current sources. Let's not solve for all the node voltages in our circuit, then we can solve for the currents that we were looking for in the beginning of the problem. 
Solve for V2, this is the column associated with V2, even though it's not column two, it's the fact that we're gonna multiply this times this entry or this entry. We're gonna take this left-hand side of the equation and put that into this column, because that's the column associated with V2, and that's gonna be my solution then. That determinant divided by the original matrix determinant will give me the value of V2. So this times this is gonna give me seven micro times V sub S, and then I'm gonna have a plus four micro times V sub S, so I can pull V sub S out. I have 42 micro here, and then a minus one micro. So I'm gonna up getting 11 micro over 41 micro, which is 0.2683 times V sub S. So V2 is in terms of V sub S. So if V sub S increases, this will increase by the same factor. If we were to double this, we would double this. Again, we'll talk about this a little bit later, of course, it's the idea of linearity. Now let's solve for V3. I'm gonna put this into this column instead. I have the original six and minus one milli here. And so I'll get 24 micro times V sub S and then plus one micro times V sub S. So I can pull that out. The denominator is still the same. We found that to be 41 micro. The ratio of these two are 0 0.6098 times V sub S. And again, if this were to double, then this would double. Now the current I sub S, if you go back and look at the previous page, is the current leaving the voltage source and that's going to be equal to, let's erase this here, it's going to be equal to this current plus this current. The current going in this direction, let's erase these marks from last time, is going to be this node voltage minus this node voltage divided by 250, and then the current in the 1K resistor is going to be V1 minus V2 divided by 1K. And that's the expression I have here. So here's the current in 250 ohm resistance, and here's the current in the 1K resistance. So let's solve for I sub S now. So I have V sub S, and then I have V3, which is 0 0.6098 times V sub S. I could pull out the V sub S, and multiply that by four milli, and then V2 up here is 0 0.2683 times V sub S. And so I can calculate this and multiply this out. I get 1.5608 milli, and for this difference times here is 0 0.7317 milli. So the value of I sub S is 2.2, 925 milli times V sub S. And then I could solve for the ratio of V sub S to I sub S. That would be the resistance looking into our circuit. Taking this over here, and then taking the reciprocal of the 2.2925 milli. And you get 436.2 ohms. Now this problem we could also have done with our Y to delta conversion we learned about in chapter two. Maybe try that and see if you get exactly the same answer. This is how you can write equations for circuits that contain voltage sources. If you have a series resistance, you can do a source transformation and get our inspection algorithm to work again. And if you don't, you have to just go back to doing Kirchhoff's current law. And this is how you solve problems with voltage sources.